Hello everyone out there on the internet, I am Jack of All Trades and we are here for the penultimate episode of My Hero Academia, Boku no Hero Academia Season 7. This is A Girl's Ego, Episode 20. Next week is the finale, Episode 21. The season's gonna end on a cliffhanger, I've accepted that. We're, ju we're just gonna roll with it. Last time we got the resolution to the series-long <laughs> Todoroki family um, story. At least sort of the action peak of it. I imagine we'll get some more emotional uh, moments with them in the next season. Possibly in these next two episodes as well. But I think that is... The, the big action beat has been knocked out there. We had the climactic fight uh, between... For one, Endeavor and uh, Toya. For two, Shoto and Toya. And for three, the whole family all together. So that was, that was fantastic. Um, I don't think it could have been done better. <laughs> this time, again, going by the title, Girl's Ego, we're, we're, we're finally <laughs> getting the Uraraka and Toga battle. So let's see how this goes. Probably with some inevitable cutaways to whatever's happening with Toshi, now that he's getting in the fight with some sort of support equipment. Um, and all for one. We've still got Midoriya and <laughs> Shigaraki just wrestling there. Just holding his wrists, making sure he doesn't touch anything. And yeah, that's that's kind of kind of it. We got. I, I think my biggest question. Well, I I expect in this episode, for Toga to be beaten, whether that means going with um, Uraraka and Deku's discussion earlier this season of saving Toga and Tomura. Or whether that's going to be actually, she just won't give up and I'll have to fight her. Uh, until she's knocked out, I guess. I mean, she, she's not a character who you can beat by stalling anymore. Like, all for one, we could have bet by stalling him. Um, but uh, they, did, they did their absolute best, but he was just too good, too strong um, at stalling him at this point. I mean, that's what All Might's doing, I guess, or trying to do, perhaps, um, is stall him out so the time runs out on his rewind and he's gone. Here with Toga, we could... We, you you could stall her, but there's the copies of 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 the copies. So, stalling her makes no difference, they just need to beat her. If she's knocked unconscious, does the sad man's death parade end? Uh, can she consciously choose to, like, just switch off if she stops copying Jean? Will that end the parade? I assume so. Um, but I, I expect Toga to lose in this confrontation. Whether, again, that means in physical combat, or she just surrenders, or however this is gonna go, I don't know. But I don't expect... Toga to continue scampering off into the distance for next season. Um, I expect some resolution to her story here. Because again, her and Toya Dabi have been sort of paired up from the start, from when they were first introduced by Giren to Tomura and Kuragiri to now. They've always sort of been in tandem with one another, so I think them having their, their climaxes back-to-back -back makes sense, uh, structurally. So I look forward to that. Keep the comment section spoiler-free! You know the drill, play the clip. In terms of my familiarity with the series, I have watched the entire anime up to this episode, of course. I have read the entire manga up to the end of chapter 328, which is the end of volume 33. I have seen the first three My Hero Academia movies. I have read the Ultra Analysis Guidebook. I have read the first six volumes of the light novel series My Hero Academia School Briefs. And I have read all 15 volumes of the prequel spin-off series, My Hero Academia Vigilantes, which was great. That is everything I know, that is what I'm going to be drawing from in my reaction, so possible spoilers for any of that content, which also means that, that is all fair game for you to discuss in the comments down below. Now without any further ado, 3, 2, 1, play. Okay, yep, a little bit of recap. Shoto running in. I get the animation last episode was fan fucking fantastic, and I remember seeing somewhere that like this episode did 
phenomenally well of, like, IMDb. Like, it reviewed very well. Again, I love the choice, I mentioned it before, um, the choice to have Todoroki's ice, in, in this season specifically, have more of a green-ish tint to it, um, which is a great way to differentiate between Dabi's blue fire. So, okay, look. There's the, there's the blue ball of fire, and it's this greenish sort of tinted ice that forms over it, and then the shockwave and everything has got a green hint to it. I re again, stylistically, visually, I really like that. Um, that's a way to sort of differentiate it, and it does make it look colder as well, which is good. <sighs> I'm still gonna look away for the bit that I've been told has spoilers, because I imagine it's gonna be all right. Um, or Toshinori and whatever form with all the support gear. But I don't want to know what that design looks like, so I'll, I'll, I'll look away for that. Lamillion, yeah, Death Arms, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're still waiting for the Shirakumo stuff, is Stain gonna get more involved? He's still in... He's still in the city with All Might. And all for one now. Stain is present for that. And yeah, it's the Shirakumo thing, Uraraken, Toga spinning up into the sky, the coffin. All of 1A. And Deku ultimately running toward Tomura. And we're here. The Gunga Villa site. After that explosion. <laughs> okay. Yes, because Endeavor lured Dabi away from the actual, like, Crater. <laughs> a bit. Mm. And she sees Darby's being defeated as well. Uh, Jiro's down. Asui. Oh. I get this just so many twices. Look at that shit. They're flowing like a liquid. Bob. Oh, yeah, they can just... Ryuko! I didn't know that was her first name. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Ida. Yeah, they're just coming toward everyone on the horizon. Oh, I love Hawks still standing there to protect Tokuyami, but... Yeah, we're not going to be able to float above it, but they have the tapes, yeah. And Uraraka has her, like, grapple tape as well, but... Nice! Spacewalk. <laughs> Sue? Oh no. Flashback. Yeah. Still not showing her parents' faces. Because it doesn't matter. This is how she remembers them in this moment. Yeah. Yeah, back to that. Oh, yeah, yeah. She she brought back all these memories and everything. Not that she repressed them, but she just didn't actively think about them. Okay. Oh, come in the woods. Helping Jiro, nice, nice, nice. Oh. <laughs> She's making copies of her now. Oh. Uh. Oh, what? What? Okay. 
So, Toga has transformed into Twice and is making copies of Twice. And those copies of Twice can make a copy of Toga, who, through, like, osmosis between the lot of them, gets their blood and can thus look like them. Which only becomes a problem if... They, they get some of... Oh my god. <laughs> that only becomes a problem if they get some of Araka's blood, because that's the only one she can copy right now. Of the, like, hero group. Or the Twices somehow have... Well, actually, no, they could have gotten Jiro and Asui's measurements, I guess, when they were, like, pinning them down and everything, so that works still. The tape has like a razor wire. Oh my god, there's a fucking Kermit mouth. Oh, damn, okay. But it's the two of them floating in the air above everything else. The structure of twice is still building higher and higher and higher, so... Yeah. But she, Uraka got Toga alone, separate from everyone else. But Toga got her with a knife. So, Toga-chan, do Oh, yeah. Pikachu, I heard that. Subtitle didn't say it, but. To live as herself. Okay, I like I like that I like that moment a lot. That's that's great. Yeah. Because you can still make copies even while floating, right? Yeah. Not that you need to, given the sheer number already here. Oh, great character animation. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. Sad man's legion. But there's the time limit on the parade. Jesus. I love that they keep cutting to the wider perspective on it. And seeing it flood through the city! Ooh. Nice, nice. Just, just send... Oh, but it, it, it can make her sick using it on t too many targets, right? But go beyond plus ultra, right? Hmm. They've made a very deliberate choice to very sparingly use the music so far this episode. Oh, I love all the, like, distorted faces. And highlighting the... Pink, and it was Eel Man, yeah, yeah, who Toga also killed. I, I, I really like the pink, like, trails off her fingers. Is, is that stylistic, or is Uraka having an awakening? Oh! Yep, yep, okay. Zero gravity on the whole march. Without having to touch them, oh... Oh, Uraka will be devastating as a villain. <laughs> and is that the whole march or just within a certain radius? You know, the, the, the specifics, but the emotional core. Yeah, 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 okay. Wow, so in that case, you got the entire march. Oh, yeah, mind, mind your helicopter. <laughs> Yeah, if, if, if it's like Shigaraki being able to touch something and decay everything that's touching that something. Okay, I like that it leaves a few twices on the ground, because... Realism-wise, yeah. Oh. 
The villain costume equipment left behind on the ground below. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, she said it! <laughs> that, that, that's the first time she's admitted that. Light flashing before her eyes. Oh! A twisted monster with a hole ripped in his chest. Time's up. Damn. Goodbye, Jean. Again. That's it. There's, there's no more of his blood that they got on reserve. He's gone. From, from the beautiful pink, now this black and brown sort of mud and dirt filling the air as well. Aww. Aww. Yeah. Aww. And that's where we end off! Okay! <sighs> Fantastic animation and visuals. There was one shot that I thought was a little... I'm gonna nitpick first before going into everything I liked. There was one shot that I thought was a little off that was meant to be sort of this big moment of Araka like, reeling herself in and the camera was following her from behind doing so. Um... That would, would have been like a cool one shot. It reminded me of something from like Attack on Titan where they had the characters like, running and flying through the cities. That's what it was meant to be like, but because they're up in the air and there's no, like, frame of reference for what's around them, it's just all the other copies and everything floating. There's no, like, structure to the environment for us to, like, track them moving through. It didn't quite work 100%. I got what they were going for, but I don't think it quite worked. Uh, but again, nitpicks, nitpicks. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see if they change up the ED for Toga like they did for Dobby. It'll be after this shot here. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Cute. Cute. And let's see if we're getting a post credit scene for the penultimate episode of the season. No, just the preview. Okay. Um, I really liked, um, and it's something that they use Toga for a lot, uh, but hammering it home here for the climactic resolution of it all, obviously, that makes sense to do, uh, but hammering home um, Toga as an example of a character who is put upon by two major factors of this world, being the societal um, sort of pigeonholing of villainous quirks, um, or quirks that are perceived in that way. Um, Sh uh, Shinso is a big example of that. Uh, Monoma, uh, to a different extent, being pigeonholed into, ah, uh, it's more of a side character thing. Um, bloody um, Chimera from the second movie. A lot, a lot of villains are people who have quirks, like the whole heteromorph thing and being, um, discriminative against because of the assumption you look like a villain. Gang Orca is, what was he, number one or number ten on, like, the list of, the the official list of heroes who look like they should be villains or something? Like, that's fucked up. There's, there's a big thing in this world. Um, so, Toga having a quirk that is heavily related to blood and the consumption of blood yeah, pe people assume that. Uh, people think that. Her parents did not react or take it very well at all. 
Um, I don't want to put all the blame on them, but certainly some of it goes to them. Like, this is your fucking child. Come on. Uh, and the other major, like, world thing, um, it's something they've touched on a few times. It's never been, like, drilled in upon in the same way as uh, the Doomsday Theory, uh, the Quirk Singularity Theory, or anything like that. Um, or even the pigeonholing of, you look like a villain, you have a villainous quirk, you're... Society views you that way unless you're, you're, you're limited in your choices and end up becoming a villain. You're forced into it in a way. Um, one that's been touched on less than that, but was very much brought up here, and it's brought up a few times throughout the show, is the idea of people's quirks having some effect on their personality. Um, so, the big obvious one is Tomura manifested a quirk that just destroys stuff that he touches. And he wants to destroy everything. That's, that's the simplest example. And then here we got Toga, whose quirk revolves around blood and the consumption of it, and thus just had a fascination with that since a young age. And she thinks that's the best way to like express different emotions. Uh, love, specifically, is the big example here. Um, I'm just wanting to live as she wants, do as she wants, and not be forced to not be herself. Because that, that is an integral part of who she is, that desire, that want, that way of expressing herself. But she's been told since she was a kid, that smile's creepy. No, no, don't do that, don't do that, you look like a monster. We've given birth to a devil. <laughs> you're not human, and that, that drilled into her head. So then when she had a crush on this boy, who happens to look like Deku, as she said, I, I couldn't ask him for his blood because he'd have said I wasn't human, because that's what her fucking parents told her. Uh, I, I'm glad that they got a scene in of like, oh no, they did take her to counselling, but the everything put in place just isn't really accommodating to that. Is the, the, the system isn't built to help everyone for every possible thing that could happen. Like, I mean, people donate their blood all the time. They, they, could, they could have set something up with that. Um, where she could consume, like, donated blood and stuff. Like, the, 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 yeah, the, the, the stuff that could have been done. Things could have gone differently. But that is... You could say that about any character's backstory in any piece of fiction ever. Things could have played out differently. Sometimes that is the point, other times that is a talking point, something to think about, as it is here. I was thrown off initially by them making copies of um, Sue and Jiro and Pixie Bob and um, Conway Woods. Uh, I was like, oh, because of their blood? That was kind of what I thought they were saying, but then it also would make sense that they just the twices combined just got all their measurements and stuff through pinning them down and fighting them. So, yeah, and actually using the tapes to get measurements at some points as well in the fight. So that, that that works. Yeah, lots of fun visuals. I really liked the scene, the like flashback to the league of like uh, compressed and they're saying, "Hey Toga, why why don't why, do you, why don't you have a villain name?" And I'm saying, "Well, the identity that she wants to put out there into the world, the identity that she wants to live by." is herself. She's been forced to not be herself her whole life. So that was great. The CG for the mob of Twices. Again, I do typically prefer 2D animation, but that, that would take so fuck it. We'd have to wait another year for this season if they did all those Twices hand drawn throughout this season. And again, constantly cutting, well, repeatedly cutting away to Hawks and Tokiyami or Ida or the Todoroki seeing this on the horizon getting bigger and bigger and bigger throughout the episode it was great. And yeah, Uraka having... It's like, okay, it's not like a super move, it's not something she's been training. Toga clocks it, it's like, oh, I had a quirk awakening when I was on, like, Death's Door and everything and was able to copy her quirk. Toga, uh, and realizing, well, this must be what's happening for Uraka. Uh, so that is, um, unlike Mina's, where there's a bit of ambiguity as to whether it's an awakening or not. If it's not spoilers, let me know in the comments. Is what happened with Mina the previous episode a quirk awakening or just her going beyond plus ultra which can be one in the same thing but yeah <laughs> uh i'm not gonna watch the preview for next episode 
but I am once again going to hop over to Wikipedia, where they will have already listed the title and release date. Uh, battle without a quirk. Okay, next episode we're focusing on All Might. Cool. I said a couple episodes ago um, that I didn't think there was enough time left in the season to resolve Toya and Toga and All for One and Shigaraki. So my prediction was that we would resolve Toya and <laughs> Toga and All for One and not Shigaraki, and we'd have him lingering into next season. We've resolved two of the three, which just leaves us with All for One, who is, again, I want to say in his 30s at the oldest right now? For sure, 20s. But he's constantly rewinding, he's constantly getting younger. And that rewind is accelerating and accelerating and accelerating as he takes more and more damage. So all All Might needs to do is hit him enough times for that rewind to get faster and faster and faster and faster until he's gone. Or stall him until he's just gone at the rate he's already at, you know? And again, I, I don't expect him to show up. I mean, it'd be cool if he does. Um, I think it'd be really interesting to get these three characters interacting and talking. Um, I don't know how likely it is, but All Might, All For One, and Stain is, is, is present. Stain is in the city. He's the only other character we know is still there, aside from All Might, and now All For One has just arrived. Because he was watching over Ida and Shoto, who <laughs> jetted off. So he, he he's still here too, and he has his like, prominent moment of drawing his sword in the ED, uh, in the OP, sorry. That he appeared on stream for like a couple seconds <laughs> last episode. Uh, so I, I do wonder if we'll get any more from him, but it's just one shot. So maybe not. Right, I think that does it for this week. Again, another great episode. Didn't hit me as hard as, as Toya's goodbye, Toya's climax did. But I, I, I like this one a lot. And the visual, again, the visuals of the last two episodes are great. And the, the, the fucking... What was that, like, monster thing that we saw? Uh, to, like, the, the mental image, self-perception, visualizing thing. Like, really spindly arms and, like, massive shoulder blades and it's all twisted and wound up from the ground. With a, noticeably, like, a big hole in, like, the abdomen, and it's, like, the ground around has been spun up into it as well. It's a really, like, off-putting design. And there's bits where I'm like, is that shadow? Or is that, like, the, the, the strands of this thing sort of weighed, like, the breasts are sort of weighed down, and you can almost see through to more of the body and stuff. It, it's a really good design. I'd love to see... Horikoshi's drawing of this in the manga. Which I will do. Again, I will I will read the manga for this season. After this season. I don't, I don't know how soon after this season. But I, I will have read all the manga for this <laughs> that has transpired before the final season. Which I don't know if we have a release date for yet. I imagine we'll get it after the next season. Or at least an announcement of them doing another season. Which I think was already a given. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to whatever the fuck's going to happen next episode. How is All Might going to do this? I'll see you all next week. I've been Jack of All Trades, and until then, bye.